Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. <laughs> now remember, friends, there's one rule that you must follow when listening to this program. You're not allowed to talk or whisper, but if you scream, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, I've just come back from the most deadly vacation I ever had. Went horseback riding with a headless horseman, swimming with a sea serpent, and golfing with a ghost. In the evening, I visited old friends who just moved into new graves. <laughs> but here I am, home again, pale, unhealthy, and bloodthirsty. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Honeymoon with Death, was written by Milton Lewis and stars Arlene Blackburn in the role of Joan with Mason Adams as Tony. All right, friends. Turn the lights down low and keep in mind the fact that all events that happen on this program shouldn't happen to a dog. Of course, if you feel like twitching, go right ahead. We always say a twitch in time saves nine. Ready? Then listen as lovely young Joan Darby tells us her story in her own words. It was at the end of one of the happiest days of my life. Perhaps the last day of happiness I'll ever know. When this car drove up and parked outside our cottage... First, I thought it was Tony, but then, then I noticed the man who got out was dressed like a cleric. And the woman with him was rather overdressed in a sporty way. In a moment, they were knocking at my door. And when I went to answer it... This is Darby. I... Uh, I beg your pardon. There, there must be some mistake. I'm not Mrs. Darby. Ellen, is she the young woman? Yes, that's Mrs. Darby. There's no doubt about it. I'm sorry, I don't think we've ever met. We haven't, Mrs. Darby. But please don't try to deny your identity again. I really do know who you are, despite the name you're using here. You're the former Joan Kent, the present Mrs. Anthony Darby, am I right? Yes, I am. May we come in? We must see you. Why? It's about a matter of the utmost seriousness. One might say it's a matter of life and death. I'm speaking of your life or death. Mrs. Darby. Oh, really? I... Please don't argue. Let us in. Just a moment. You'd better come back later when my husband's here. In an hour or so. My dear, we knew your husband was away. That's why we purposely came at this time. Do you mind telling me who you are? This gentleman is the Reverend Lawrence Norwell, a retired clergyman and a friend of mine. I'm Mrs. Ellen Ramartin. Why did you come here? We came here to save you from being murdered. Murdered. I know that's a shocking thing to say, especially to a young woman on her honeymoon. How'd you know that? I suppose Tony selected this little cottage, so isolated, so far from the main road, so remote. Well, yes, he did. What of it? We've come to that in a moment, my dear. Uh, did your husband insist in his subtle way that you take along your jewelry and certain other valuables on this honeymoon trip? I'm afraid I can't answer that. You don't trust No, her. I don't. Ellen, perhaps you had better tell her your story. Mrs. Darby, has your husband ever told you that he was married before? No. Well, he was. To me. You? Yes. He can be very charming when he wants to be, your Tony. I wasn't the first woman whose head is turned, but I found out about him in time. What did you find out? That he was planning to murder me. Mrs. Ramartin and Reverend Norwell, would you please leave my house at once? You love him very much, don't you? Yes, I do love him. And I don't care to listen to any more vicious slander. If Tony is what you say he is, why didn't you go to the police? I have gone to the police. But he's much too clever for them. They couldn't do a thing against him without evidence. And the evidence they need is a dead body. Get out. Get out, both of you. Get out of here. Ellen, the girl is becoming hysterical. I think we've done our duty. I think we'd better leave. Will you go to the car, please? I want just one more word. Yes, of course. 
Mrs. Darby. Why must you prolong this? I remain behind because I'm going to do something I know Reverend Noel will never approve of. I'm going to give you these two things. On this piece of paper is my telephone number. I've rented a small house near here. In case you need help, please send for me. The second thing is this. A gun. I'm leaving it with you. It's fully loaded. You may need it. I don't want it. Don't be a fool. You may thank me for it someday soon. Oh, please don't leave it here. I know how you feel, my dear. I love him, too. He's so very charming. Always so thoughtful. Always bringing little gifts. Has he given you antique jewels yet? Or has he brought you roses and recited the famous poem by... Oh, why don't you leave? Why haven't you the decency to leave me alone? Of course, my dear. I'm so sorry. Goodbye. John? John, where are you? John? What is it, Tony? Well, what's the idea, darling? Why have you locked yourself in your room? Just a moment. Tony. Sweetheart. You look lovely. What have you been doing, taking a nap? Yes, I was. Well, you don't have to lock the door. I was all alone here. Oh, you poor darling. You're frightened. I'll try not to leave you alone again. No, Tony, don't. But, darling, I just want to kiss you. Don't touch me. Joan, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I, nothing. I fell asleep. I, I had a bad dream. I, Tony. Yeah. Why did you select this cottage to spend our honeymoon? I thought that you'd like it. It's ideal for a honeymoon. There's no one around, just the two of us. Then there was another reason I hadn't told you about. Another reason? <laughs> well, it's a rather silly, romantic reason. Really? Tell me. They call this place the Enchanted Cottage. Enchanted? How? Oh. Well, it's very old, you know. And a legend says that once upon a time, long ago, a bride-to-be slept here. A girl of 16, almost a child. And on the following morning, she was to marry a man who was false to her. What happened to her, Tony? Well, during the night, she fell under the power of the spell that's been cast over this cottage. And this gentle child awoke, a child no longer. Overnight, she was changed into a hideous old demon, insane and vengeful, who murdered her lover and cast herself into the sea. And so now they say that only true lovers dare stay here. But we have nothing to worry about, do we, dear? <laughs> Joan, are you crying? I I thought that story would amuse you. I found it very amusing. An enchanted cottage. You're right, it is romantic, but Tony, will you tell me this? Why'd you suggest I bring my jewelry to, to a place like this? Well, I didn't plan to stay here more than a week or so. I thought we'd travel, perhaps go to Canada, perhaps even take a boat there for Europe. We'll go out. You'll want your jewels. Why do you use an assumed name for us? Well, I told you I, I I didn't want people to know that we're here. I didn't want any old friends or relatives dropping in on it. Darling, why all these questions? I love you. You surely must know that. Oh, you must forgive me. I... Oh, I've been a foolish, silly girl who's had a bad dream, but now I'm awake. And I love you, too. Oh, Tony, I love you. Joan, dear. Come with me, darling. I brought some gifts for you in town. Gifts? Yes, I know you have a feeling for old things, so when I saw this in an antique shop in town... Oh, what a lovely old locket. Oh, it's perfect. I'm glad you like it. After all, what do I know about antique jewelry? Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing gets a chill. It gets so cold in here tonight. What's the other gift you brought me? Rosie? How did you know? Where are they? Here. Oh, they're, they're beautiful. My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody that's sweetly played. Oh, stop it! What? Stop it! Joan, what's the matter? Don't come near me, Joan! Sorry! <laughs> Joan, don't be afraid. Oh, 
Tony. Tony, what happened to me? You fainted, darling. Uh, I put you on the couch. I'm afraid you're not very well. Would you like me to get a doctor? No. No, I'm not, I'm not that ill. It's just... It's just my nerves. Is it? Yeah, I've been that way all my life. My doctor's given me a prescription. I, I didn't think I'd need it. Shall I go to town and get it, Phil? Yes, it's, it's in my purse on the table. Oh, yes, I've got it. Come, darling, I'd like you to go with me. Oh, I, I don't think so. I, I'll do better to stay here and rest. Well, I don't like to leave you alone again. Oh, don't worry. I'll be all right this time. Is there a druggist still open? Yes, but I'd better hurry. He closes at nine, I think. Well, then you'd better hurry. And don't worry about me. All right. Goodbye, darling. Hello, operator. I want you to get a number for me quickly, please. I... Oh, wait, I had it here on a piece of paper. Where did I put it? Yes, it's here. Martin answered and told me how to go to her home. It was only a short distance. I could walk it in less than half an hour. I had to speak to her again. So I loved Tony and I had to find out how much was hysterical suspicion, how much was truth. So as I approached the house, I could see a dim light. I heard someone scream. Tony! What are you doing here? Tony! I ran forward. There was a window open. I could see Mrs. Martin in the far end of the room. On her face, an indescribable expression of terror. Somewhere in the shadows, the figure moved slowly toward us. I didn't mean any harm, Tony. I just came here because I loved you. What are you doing with that cord? Help me, someone! He's going to kill me! He's going to murder me! Help! 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 The lamp crashed to the floor as he sneezed it. I turned from that window and began to run wildly toward town. I wanted to reach a telephone, but there were no houses, no cars to pass. I was alone on the road with just a flashlight. I'd seen a murder committed before my eyes, and I knew then what would happen to me unless I reached the police, unless I found help. And then I saw a car coming down the road. I waved my light frantically to signal them. It seemed a miracle when the car pulled to the side of the road. What's wrong there? Oh, thank heaven you stopped. You've got to help me. I... Tony. Tony. What are you Tony. doing here? I don't know. I, I went to look for Tony. Get in the car, Tony. Get, get him? Yes, my dear. I'm afraid you're a very sick girl. Sick? Perhaps I am ill, Tony. Come, dear. Yes. Where, where are we going? Home. To our enchanted cottage. <laughs> nothing. Not a word to each other until we arrived at the cottage. I knew my life depended completely on my ability to maintain control of myself. Min Joan. I I think I'll go to my room, Tony. No. I want to know why you didn't stay here. I I can't explain it. I I felt I just couldn't remain in this place any longer. Why not? I can't tell you. I've grown to hate it. I'm not very well. Just what is wrong with you, Joan? I... I thought I told you. You didn't tell me that anything like this would happen. Has it happened before? This sudden hysterical running away? This, this blackout when someone asks you why you did it? Yes, it happened before. While I was at college. What did the doctor say then? He told me to see a psychiatrist. Did you? Yes. Darling, I'm very tired. I, I really don't want to go on with it. I'm afraid we'll have to. You see, I love you very much. Love me? Yes. I'm your husband. I have a right to know everything about you. What did the psychiatrist tell you? Tony, I... I insist upon knowing. He... He said that there was nothing very much wrong. Except that I'd developed an abnormal sensitivity. In what direction? In every direction. He... He said that I'd be quite well when I... When I got married. Had children. Really? Yes, Tony. He said that I'd have difficulty in finding the right man, that, that I was much too clever for most men, that, that my tastes were a little too special to be easily satisfied. I see. Well, I waited. Finally, the right man did come along. Young, attractive, sensitive. A man who told me he adored me. I fell madly in love with him, Tony. So madly in love that it was the only thing that made any difference in my life. And then... And I married 
Do you still love him, Joan? Yes, I still love him. Even now. Even now? What do you mean by that? I love him. You better tell me. Let go of my wrist. Tell me. I found out why you married me. What did you find out? That everything you said was lies. That you're a complete fraud. No worse that you're a murderer. That you brought me here to kill me. You made a mistake, Joe. Are you going to deny it? No. But I didn't know that you knew about me. Now, now I'll have to come back here. No. You're not getting out of here. No. When I opened my eyes, Tony was looking down at me. Came to enough for a moment I forgot who he was. Why he was staring at me. All I knew was that he looked so handsome. You'd better sit up now. What, what happened? I knocked you out. Why didn't you kill me while I was unconscious? Because there was something I had to tell you. You... You are going to kill me, though, aren't you? Yes. With that cord you have in your hand? Yes. When? In a moment. I wasn't lying when I told you I loved you. Oh, please, Tony. Please don't make it any worse. Don't try to make me believe you really cared. But I did care. We could have been happy. It's true, I met you. I pursued you because I wanted your money. But then I fell in love for the first time in my life. How did you find out about me, Joe? Why should you care about that now? You're right, you're right. You're right. Why should I care? I know now that even though I may still love you, I can never trust you. And so, Joan, Tony. it will all be over very quickly if you don't struggle. No. Please, no. darling. I don't want to make it any more difficult than is necessary. Please, Tony. You said you still love me. I'll do anything you want, anything. Tony, please. Please don't kill me. Ah! Suddenly, I made a cord that was around my neck and I felt it tightly. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't think. And I felt my finger touch the drawer of the table behind me. The gun, the gun Mrs. Ramartin gave me. Of course, why didn't I remember about that before? I managed to open it. I felt the handle with my fingers. Tony was staring at my eyes as though hypnotized, but his arms and his fingers kept twisting the cord. And he did a very strange thing. He leaned towards me. He put his lips on mine. He kissed me. Joan. Joan! Oh, oh, Joan, I just wanted to tell you what. For a moment, I... I was dizzy. I, I loosened the cord and looked down. Told me he was dead. Then I noticed that something had fallen out of his pocket. It was a little bottle of medicine. The medicine I had sent him for. Lauren? Yes, my dear. What happened? Oh, it was very simple. She waited until the last moment and then the dear girl killed him with the gun you gave her. I didn't think she'd have the courage, really. A little slip of a girl like her. Did you watch from the window? Yes. Immediately after she killed him, she picked up a little bottle that had fallen out of his pocket, and then she rushed out of the house. I suspect she ran off to give herself up to the police or kill herself or something. When the house was empty, I simply went in, found her jewels, and here I am. Let me see the jewels. Here you are, my dear. It turned out much better than I thought it would. So it seems. Without being too vain, I did think I made an admirable clergyman. <laughs> yes. You were quite handsome. Thank you. And while we're trading compliments, let me congratulate you on your death. Your demise was superb, Ellen. Thank you. Oh, what's wrong? Well, if you must know, it's Tony. Now, darling, I know you were fond of the boy. I loved him. He was charming. He's dead now, and he deserves it. He would have led the three of us to the chair eventually. 
He was really mad about this girl, and he couldn't be trusted at all. I suppose you're right. He had to go. He had enough on the two of us to make us quite uncomfortable. I think we'd better leave now. All right. I'll go close the back door. Ah! Put that gun down. You little fool. Ah! Ah! Ellen. <coughs> Ellen, what happened? Don't move. Stay just where you are. But Mrs. Darby. Yes. Mrs. Darby. You... You killed her. Yes, I killed her. Did... Did you hear what... Yes, I heard everything. Do you mind telling me why you came here? To kill you. Oh, now, really. I never thought I'd have the courage to murder another human being. Frankly, I shared that opinion of you myself. But strange things can happen in a cottage that has a magic spell cast over it. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a 16-year-old girl who changed overnight into a hideous old demon who murdered her lover and cast herself into the sea. Oh, you're mad. You both deliberately murdered Tony because he loved me. Well, after all, a man in love can't be trusted. He's not quite safe. Then neither is a woman who's in love. Now, don't lose your head. Ah. Oh. What? what did you say before? A hideous old demon? That's what you are. Ah. I made quite certain that he was dead. Then I went to the telephone and called the police. And I killed my husband, of course. It was in self-defense. And then when I saw the bottle of medicine, I realized that he couldn't have murdered Mrs. Ramartin. He was in town at the time. I realized I'd been tricked. The murder of Mrs. Ramartin was deliberate. So was that of her friend, the gentleman who posed as the Reverend Norwell. In telling this story to the police records, I'm making no defense of my actions. But it may be true that, that perhaps I was insane when I committed the last two murders. Or perhaps I was caught in the spell of our enchanted cottage. I guess that ought to teach Joan to be more careful about arranging her accommodations for her next honeymoon. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, the, uh, the moral for our story is taken from one of the screams of a famous Irish banshee named Jill O'Teen, who said, Don't be frightened by nightmares. After all, they're not nearly as frightening as the things that can really happen to you. <laughs>